DLRs, what's going on, Mike Boards with the Mike Boards channel. Thank you for watching. Hey, we're talking jet skis today. We're working on my mom and dad's 2003 Sea Dew. And in today's video, the proper and safe way to replace both ignition coils. And in our case, ours are located inside the electrical box. Let's get started. All right, DLRs, here we are at the workstation. And here is the jet ski. This is my mom and dad's jet ski, 2003 Sea Dew GTX. And again, we are going to replace the internal ignition coils. Let's take a look on the workbench. As we make our way around the jet ski, hey, if you're into skateboarding, definitely check out the links down below in the comments section, as well as the description section. We build the skateboards and mount them on the wall. And coming to the workbench, here's what I always recommend when working on your equipment, whether it's a jet ski, boat, car, truck, etc., a motorcycle. Always reference your exact serial number service manual to ensure you're doing everything the right way and to manufacturers recommendations and specifications. However, here are our previously replaced spark plug wires, boots, and plugs. Check out those. We had a little bit of rough engine running and a little bit of loss of power. And that's something that helped cause that. Look how burnt that spark plug is on the right hand side. And we are doing a lot to this jet ski, rebuilding or replacing many parts. And we will post links down below in the comment section as well as the description section. We'll talk about that at the tail end of the video. Here are our brand new ignition coils. We have two of them. Let's go ahead and open them. And here they are out of the box and packaging. Again, two brand new ignition coils, exact same part numbers. Here we are, port side of the jet ski. We are now going to remove our seat. And in our case, we've got these little latches right back here. And notice how I can move that latch extremely easily. And there is no screeching or obnoxious, unfriendly sounds because we have properly lubricated our latches. In the event that you do not lubricate your latches over time, well, guess what? They become stiff and they can fail prematurely and that is not what you want however below we have links on not only how to properly lubricate your latches but in the event that you actually have one break there is a link down below that shows how to properly replace a latch we will remove our seats seats are removed as you see here coming to the jet ski inside the front portion of the hall in our case is where our battery is. And at this point, it is extremely important to cut all electrical power to your system. However, as you can see, our battery is completely removed from the jet ski. In your case, your battery is probably still installed. We recommend disconnecting the black negative cable from your battery, again, cutting all electrical power to the system. From here, we've got this little white storage compartment that actually houses backup spark plugs. Now, this is your center brace for your forward seat. And that is where the forward seat latches onto. Coming back here, there is our electrical box. And you see two blue wires or cables and two red ones. The two blue wires actually feed upstream and secure onto your spark plugs. Again, we replaced those in a previous video. And the red wires or cables is for your starting system and battery. One feeds in and supplies power to your starter relay, while the other one feeds underneath and into the bottom portion of our starter that we also replaced in a previous video, which is down below under that air box. However, back to our electrical box. Let's go ahead and open up. As you see here, and you should have a rubber seal. In our case, it is still down right here. You can see it right there. If it's loose, no big deal at this point. What we'll do at the tail end of the project is show you how to re-secure that seal because that's extremely important. That seal helps keep water and moisture and any other thing hanging out inside this hull from getting inside that electrical box and ultimately degrading the internal parts. That would not be good. And here it is. You've got the top ignition coil. As you can see, there is a big piece of white tape on it. And to the bottom right hand corner, you can see an electrical connection. And on the left hand side, you've got a larger boot that secures our spark plug wire. With the camera repositioned, I am going to start with this rubber boot. Again, that feeds off one of our spark plug wires and secures into that very top coil. And just carefully pull it, grab it by the base and pull it out. And here is the inside, and I'll tuck that in. 
The next thing we are going to do is remove this electrical connection point. And on the very far right side, you can see a little hook. You can basically see it on the bottom portion of my finger right there. By pushing that hook out, you can actually simultaneously pull the electrical connection out. There it is again. There is the hook right there. You just pull it up and it unhooks or unlocks from the ignition coil. And from here, you got two 10 millimeter bolts on top of the ignition coil. Let's go ahead and loosen up and remove those. I grab my Craftsman quarter inch ratchet and socket with the 10 millimeter deep socket. And I'll do my best to not get in your way. As you see, I am now on the left hand 10 millimeter bolt and carefully unscrew and remove each of the bolts. They're pretty rusty as you can see. Once you break it free, you can loosen it to remove it by hand. And DIYers, as I always say, do your absolute best not to drop any hardware or parts inside the bottom portion of the hull. They will be there forever because in most cases you will not be able to find them. Now to the rear bolt. With the two 10 millimeter bolts now removed, before we pull that ignition coil out, I recommend taking photos because when we put everything back together, you want to ensure that you resecure the spark plug wires back into their respective connections. And as you can see with this rubber boot or fitting here, it's got white electrical tape on it. And on the top portion of the top ignition coil, we've got white tape. So again, take photos and there it is. From here we can gain access to the lower ignition coil and remove the spark plug wire and fitting as well as the electrical connection point right down here and the two 10 millimeter bolts holding that ignition coil in place inside that box. And in the event that you are having trouble removing this bottom or top for that matter spark plug connections, go ahead and carefully unscrew the fitting on the exterior portion of the electrical box. And that will allow you to pull the spark plug wire slightly out of the box to give you better clearance to remove it off of the ignition coil. And inside here you have a rubber bushing that creates a watertight seal to alleviate any moisture or water getting inside this little hole and making its way inside the box. You don't want that either. From here, again I got better clearance to pull that wire connection off the ignition coil as shown there. And just like the top ignition coil, again, you've got that electrical connection and that hook or locking clip. Go ahead and carefully shift it ever so carefully outward while you simultaneously pull it off the ignition coil. Do not break it. It is plastic. There we go. And another friendly reminder to stay organized. Ensure that the electrical connection points are positioned in a way where you know which ignition coil they go back into. In our case, I'm going to tuck the lower one slightly down and underneath the red cable here. From here again, loosen up those 10 millimeter bolts and remove them so we can pull that ignition coil out of that box. And there is the bottom ignition coil. No white tape. With the two ignition coils removed, I want to show you a close-up view of the internal portion of our electrical box. A little dirty. If you'd like to, now's a good time to wipe it clean with some paper towel. Try not to get a lot of water inside there because that will corrode all the parts in here. And I spent about 20 seconds wiping the internal portion of that electrical box with a dry paper towel. And from here, I'm going to Vacuum it out. Do not damage anything as you vacuum and clean the internal portion of that box. Coming back to the workbench, on the left hand side there are the old ignition coils. On the right hand side the brand new ignition coils. And before we install those, let's direct our attention to this one. Again, it's got that white tape on it. And we need to relabel one of the ignition coils with white tape to ensure that it matches that white tape spark plug wire connection boot. Inside the utility room, check this out. My mom and dad got me that for Christmas. That'll be fun this summer. How cool is that? Now we're coming up to our pegboard. And hey, if you are 
interested in putting together a pegboard, check out our link down below in the comment section as well as the description section. And here is our little section of electrical tape, and we just happen to have white electrical tape. Back to the workbench and white electrical tape and a pair of scissors. I will make a small cut and apply it to the top ignition coil there. And here it is. The white electrical tape is slightly smaller than the original, but that's okay. That's what we have. And again, that will be the ignition coil that is installed on top. And our OEM part number, 27800-1451. 27800-1451. The exact same ignition coil part numbers. And for our replacements, 27800-1451. 27800-1451, which those came out of. Back to the jet ski inside the hull where the electrical box is. And again, the bottom ignition coil is the one that does not have the white electrical tape applied to it. And this might actually be the trickiest portion of the project, just aligning these screw holes down at the bottom. And it's important to note that they are offset. In other words, one screw hole is basically at the halfway point of the electrical box, while the left-hand side is further back toward the rear. So the ignition coils will sit slightly, again, offset inside the electrical box. And as you lower that into place, just make sure you're not pinching any electrical wiring. That would not be good. Double check everything. And if all looks good, grab a bolt. I'll go to the right hand side and do my absolute best to align the screw hole. Do not cross thread these bolts inside the inserts. That would not be good. Never a good thing. They should go in extremely easily and hand tighten them in as far as you possibly can. If it gets to a point where they're tough right from the get-go, that's an indication that you're offset with the thread. From there, go ahead and turn the bolt counterclockwise and back the bolt out of the insert and take a couple seconds, reset the thread and screw it back in. After you hand tighten the right hand side bolt, before you secure it tight, go ahead and grab your opposite end bolt, align it properly, and hand tighten it in. From there, again, double check everything to ensure you're not pinching any wires. Revert back to your ratchet and socket, and secure the bolts. Do not over tighten these. And I recommend doing them in sequence. And what I mean by that is do not tighten the right hand bolt all the way before screwing in the left hand side. Do them in sequence. Next what I'll do is grab that electrical connection point that I shifted underneath the red cable here, pull that out, and I'm going to secure it into the right hand side of the ignition coil. I'm trying to give you a good view of this, I've got the wire pulled out from underneath and I've cleared all the additional wires again on the right hand side of the ignition coil. Go ahead and align it properly and shift it in until it clicks and locks in place. Again, ensure that that clip is locked in place. From here, go to the very bottom and grab the larger rubber boot that connects onto this spark plug wire as shown right there. And just like before, just ensure that nothing is going to be pinched as you push this into place. From here, double check everything. Again, two 10 millimeter bolts that secure the ignition coil into the bottom portion of the electrical box. And you've got the electrical connection point on the right hand side. Ensure that that is pushed all the way in and locked in place. And on the left hand side, you've got the spark plug wire and boot. And if all looks good, I can come back down here and shift this little cap back into place. Again, this rubber bushing here creates a watertight seal. Do not cross thread this little cap as you hand tighten it back on. Do not over tighten it, but you do want to apply a little bit of pressure to ensure that you are compressing that inner bushing, creating that watertight seal. And from here, if all looks good, let's go grab our second ignition coil. And here it is, again with the white tape. Ever so carefully lower this down and into place and align the screw holes and secure it with the 10 millimeter bolts. And like I mentioned before, do not cross thread these inside the inserts. Now 
At this point, both 10 millimeter bolts are secured. And as I was tightening that, look what came loose and fell off the white electrical tape, which really is kind of a good thing because now I can apply my smaller style white electrical tape on this boot right here and it will match. From here, I'll set that aside because I am going to connect the electrical connection point first, just like the bottom side. You've got this fitting here, and there is the lock clip. Align it properly and push it in until it locks in place, just like that. Next, the spark plug boot. And at this point, double check everything. Again, the 10 millimeter bolts, both electrical connection points and both spark plug connection points. And if you loosen up any of these, make sure they're retightened. And if all looks good, it is time to re-secure the cap. And I do want to point out this little rubber seal here. Yours may be different. However, ours goes on the top portion of the mounted box here. And as I shift the cap back on, We've got these little hooks on either side of the cap in our case, and they will slide right into and secure into their respective slots on the actual mounted case. And as you carefully align this and shift it down, that rubber seal will create a watertight seal. Again, keeping all moisture and debris out of your electrical box. And as I was pushing that cap into place, you heard three clicks, which tells us that that cap is properly secured. Coming port side and an additional look at our internal electrical box. Make sure everything is secure. And if you have any tools or, in our case, a flashlight, our brownie buckmark flashlight, make sure you remove any and all tools, flashlights, etc. from the hull. We will re-secure our little compartment here. At this point, I recommend reconnecting your battery to your electrical system. However, in our case, again, our battery is not even installed. Taking a step back, the seats are resecured. The project is complete, DIYers, as always. We hope this helps. And again, down below in the comment section, as well as the description section, will be a number of helpful videos for your convenience on replacing that little spring loaded latch, the start stop push button cap the start-stop push button and wire mechanism that feeds all the way inside your handlebar unit and downstream, and many more. And the very next project we are going to do is this right here. You can see our little step pad is begging for replacement. There is our brand new pad. That link will be down below as well, DIYers. Again, we hope the video helped. Hey, do us a favor below the video. You will see that thumbs up icon. Click on that, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Definitely ring your YouTube bell. That would be very helpful to us. We'd really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching.